Well folks, what's happening? Welcome to Mentality Monsters episode 5. So today's guest owns a pizza restaurant in Belfast, but not just any pizza restaurant, Pizza Works on the Antrim Road. This is a well established restaurant with a great reputation. His marketing str like strategies are a bit out there. He does guest pizzas, he collabs with some of the best comedians in Ireland and today he's going to speak to us about his strategies for success. Father by day and pizza hero by night. This is the Owen Scully story. Well folks, what is happening? Welcome to Mentality Monsters. Today we've got Owen on. So Owen owns a highly successful restaurant on the Antrim Road. Um, he's been one that I've been wanting to get on um, since we actually started to discuss this possibility. Um, very interesting story um, and also the work he does outside of business as well. So Owen, cheers for coming on. Mate. No problem, thank um, you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, kind of sound like James English here, but we'll just start off from the very start. <laughs> we'll just start off where you came from um, and a bit of the background on yourself. Yeah, well, I, I'm from North Belfast. Like I grew up, well, when I was born, I was born in the Madison Avenue and I moved to Cape Road just so I've always been based in North Belfast. North Belfast. Like, yeah. Um, went to went to St. Trez, went to St. Malagy's, usual North Belfast stuff, yeah. you know, so I haven't really moved far from. Were you smart enough growing up in St. Malagy's? Uh, well, I was smart up until I went to some allegations, I think, and then <laughs> my report cards always said, you know, Owen, Owen, if he puts his mind to it, he could do it, but I never did. Like, I was that, the potential. I, I never, never did. I, the, the parent teacher, nice for the worst. Nice to see whenever your man had to go down and speak to the school, like, it was... <laughs> <laughs> head in the we smack in the head in the way out. It was more than a smack in the head, I think. <laughs> see, in your family, was there much of you as growing up? Um, yeah, so it was... Uh, my mum and my daddy and uh, a brother and a sister as well. Brother and sister. So, yeah. Are they in kind of your line of work as well? No, not at no. all. My sister does a, sort of a lot of social work. My brother works uh, with students in Queens and stuff. Um, nice. my, dad, my dad was a butcher and then he sort of became a delivery driver and my mum is a teacher and like she sort of would teach like sewing classes and things like yeah. that. So it's good stuff to yeah. have. Like. Yeah, yeah. See, that's one thing that I can't do. Like, like, there's times when my clothes rip, and I always say to my ma, here, are you able to sew this? And she says, you should be able, you should be able to do, do this it. yourself. And I'm just like, no one my age knows how to sew. No, like. no. no one knows. It's easier just to buy something new. Oh, I mean, 100%. Goes. 100%. Um, so growing up, what were your like your hobbies and your activities to get up to? I was I was a nerd growing up. Like that's, I was I was really a nerd. Like a lot of people, you know, when they were 15, 16, probably out drinking and stuff, I wasn't. Yeah. I was playing like, computers with my mates. Like that's just the way I was that's, grow, that's growing it. up. But, you know... Uh, that was mainly my hobbies. Like, what so. games would you play? Well, like we would have played, you know, like like some quick games and stuff like that yeah. back in the day. And Doom, it would have been whenever whenever I'm a wee bit older. So, <laughs> Doom, ever Doom was a game. What's that, fam? Football manager. Oh, why? Oh, oh I, I got, was championship manager back in my day. Manager. Championship manager, yeah, it was unbelievable. That was the oh. game to play. Like me and my brother played that for hours. It was. Oh, it's unbelievable. And I was in a bad rut there. Right. A few months ago, just flat out playing it <laughs> constantly, like not doing anything. Do you know you can go back and play? There's the 01 02 season, you can play it online for free, and it has all the old. You can, uh, you can go and sign like Alan Shearer when he's a teenager and stuff, it's oh, class. But I think that, it's a life sucker. It was actually, it was, I think it was Claire's brother failed his GCSEs because of it, and he, he was resolved never to play it. Again, because That's an understandable thing though, like yeah. because you like you're sucked straight into it as well. Who like would have been your team to go for back then? I don't know. I always I always like going door league levels. Like I always remember having a good few games of Wigan Wonders. <laughs> we're, we're a good team, but they, they were hard graft. Like, but I, I did. I always liked it whenever you could go up and you could go down at the same, uh, at the same time. It made it a wee bit more interesting. But um, I mean, it's a game of it's a game of our generation. Like to be, uh, to, to, to be fair, love like it. It's, it's, you see your man Will Stead and stuff like that there, he's yeah. the, is it 
Rams. Aye, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. the background in football manager. Aye, uh, see, yeah, that's fucking class. Um, so, you're a restaurant owner. Yeah. And how did this come about? What? So, what's the story behind it? It all began, we were, so mo, me and my wife, Clara, Clara trained to become a pastry chef and then yeah. went into work. There was a restaurant called Nick's Warehouse. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It would have been down, do you know where the Heart Bar is now? Yeah. So the, the, the Heart Bar before it was there was a restaurant called Nick's Warehouse and Nick was one of the very first people to kind of think about, like, like gentrifying that area. Yeah. The, the Cathedral Quarter, he was one of the very first people in there. So he, he had a, I think he, like he got in very early, very cheap and had rent, uh, very, very low rent. So Clara was in there working away, um, chef, and she loved it. And it was a long hours, the chef's life. I was in computers at the time, but we lived in just off Skagen Hill. Yeah. So it was just around the back of the pizza shop. So we had heard on, we had heard on the grapevine that it was going up for sale because the owners didn't want it anymore. Yeah. So we went for it, we got it. And it was mainly, at the start, it was mainly Clara. Clara was all like, like, like the leading force of it and, and sort of the creator of it. But, um, and then as time went on, we had kids and whatever, she had to sort of come out of it a wee bit yeah. more. Yeah. When I say come out of it, I mean, she still does a hell of a lot of work. Like she does all the accounting, all the book, book work and all she's in every day stuff. making the dough. Like she, she, she's the dough, she's the main dough person. Yeah. Like, so it's, so we're still, so it's a good, it's a good double team that we'll have. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm working at nights and she's, she's What were the day. early days like, um, setting it up? It was, it was sort of difficult because whenever we, it, it's different from starting up a new business. Because you start up a new business, you've got a clean slate. Yeah. Um, it was already an existing business when we took it over. So, um, not that I'm dissing it anyway, but at that stage when we took it over, it had sort of went a bit downhill yeah. and it, it didn't really have a good reputation. So, it, that kind of worked in good force and bad force at the same time because yeah. it, it allowed us to have a few mistakes or whatever else in the early days to begin with. So, we didn't really sort of take it over too much or just sorry, change everything or rebrand it until you know, two or three months down the line yeah. when, we, when we sort of knew what we were doing. But it was a complete like you're in the deep end. Like it's it's we, we were very we were twenty we we're in our late twenties when we did it. Like so it that's was. That's what you learn. Like as yeah, well, you so learn. Yeah, hundred percent. People can tell you or give you advice what to do, but until you're until you're in there, and doing did it, you like, keep the same staff as well. Well, we still uh, today when we took over we had to because we like we didn't know how to run pizza place. Like we, we sort of near way around the kitchen and uh, and food and stuff, but we. Um, we kept them all, and sort of over time, they have all sort of petered away. But we still have one guy still working for us. Yeah. Who came? I always say he came to the building. Do you know whenever we took over, he 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 came, he came to the building. But he's still working with us. Twelve years down the line, he's he's still there. So, and then a few of the ones that we have sort of like a couple of years in are still with us. We've long time staff with us. Like so, it's. Like what gives you the idea to actually like bad? No, like see what like went on in your head to say. Fuck it, I'm going to open a pizza I, shop. I think it's just an opportunity. The opportunity was there, and, and it was, if we didn't do it, you know, we probably would have regretted it. And God knows where it would have been but now. I think it was just mainly it was the opportunity was there. Do you take it or you don't? Yeah, 100%. You know, it was not part of our plan to do have that. Have you had a passion for food? We, we both always have, yeah. 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 I mean, I'd say Clara, Clara, um, she was, she's sort of went to university and did time planning and geography and stuff like that but she then came back and there was like a there was a shortage of chefs in Belfast so there was like a chef conversion program yeah. we both applied for it but Clara got it and she got in and it was like a fast track program but Clara said before that even she had uh, a jam stall and uh, made her own jam so Clara's always Clara's, yeah, always, always Clara's very it. creative with food she always uh, she sort of slags me because if there's a recipe I stick to the recipe boom 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 that's the thing where she'll go, why don't you try a wee bit of this in and a wee bit of that in, and that's sometimes that's a difference. But again, I always see it as a good double team, you yeah, know, that like, yeah, like, works well. The chemistry's there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And you said your father was a butcher as well. Yeah. Did you ever think about possibly going into being a butcher? Or well, <laughs> that not interest you? No, it, it didn't really interest me. Sort of when I was in my late teens, he sort of moved away from it because the work had dried up here. But yeah. he he did like mental hours like he used to work in Newry and stuff so he would, he would leave the house at five o'clock and not get back to seven oh. and then when the work dried up here there was times he went to work in Denmark and stuff so it was it was a hard graph for him to, to do but he was very very good at his job but I mean sounds like a very family oriented man especially yeah 100% those, yeah see those hours just so you can live as well yeah especially. definitely yeah like you wouldn't see him and that's sometimes like that's the way I sort of look at the way that I work now as yeah. well do you know like he, he gave me a good sort of um, inspiration to work hard, like yeah. like I like I look up to him now because it's you know I see I see how hard he did he did work and stuff. Yeah. So that's the impression that I would like to 
to leave as well at the same time to my kids. Like whenever they're older, they look back and go, Jesus, here, my daddy did some some hours, like yeah, so, yeah, which is what I, I do think about with daddy, like so. 100%. And you've got like kids now. Yeah, three kids. Yeah, three kids. Yeah. How do you find that they're mixing a business with uh... elders? Like. <laughs> elders? <laughs> no, no, it, it, it's good because you know, so working evenings and stuff isn't for everybody. It's not. Yeah. It's not for everybody. Or working weekends isn't for everybody. But it's a good balance because I get to do you know stuff with the kids. You know, yeah. when they come out of school and whatever else. Like I, I miss them in the evening times, but. Uh, it's the nature of the job, and you know. What are you doing like, there? So there are five. I, I hate people ask me this because I have to go. <laughs> You're on the I, spot. I have to work, work, work. <laughs> Don't fuck uh, up. Don't fuck Five, up. eight, and ten. They five, are five, eight, and ten. Yeah. Do you ever think um, down the line you'd like them to take over the? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all for it. They, they always talk about what they're yeah. what they're going to do. I mean, my oldest is ten, um, and like. I'm already thinking. When can I, I get her to do wee things? Like yeah. come in the months off. Like I think you can, I think you can actually work from your thirteen. You can work from your thirteen on the school holidays, and there can only be a certain amount of hours or whatever. But I'm already thinking. You'll get her in here, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. You're and never too young to start. Like no, you're in. not. And I think it gives you a good a good ground. And sometimes, I don't know. Like like sometimes these days, like. Um, there's kids that don't really want to work and, yeah. and, and they're sort of comfortable in, in what they are. Don't get me wrong, like there, there are kids that want to work and I, I see there's ones that work for me and like... Grafters. The grafters. They, they see the benefit, they see that if I work, I mean, I can go out the weekend or I can pay for my driving license or I can, I can get a car or whatever yeah. else. There are ones, yeah, but I have seen ones that come through my door and out them again that just don't, they're just not interested in working. Like, just it's, it's going just, through the motions. Yeah, and I don't know whether that's, because I think sometimes they get paid for going to school and whatever else like now, so it's... I think now, especially kids can see that they can make money by even just recording themselves, playing a game and stuff yeah. like that there, where it's, it's hard to find people that actually do want to go out and do a bit of graft. Do, do, do a bit of work, yeah. yeah. And it's, like I'd say, when you first initially started out, there was a lot of graft. Yeah. Um, what were the initial challenges you faced when f first starting out there? First like, starting out? Yeah. Uh, again, it was, it was just mainly turning around that bad reputation, is what it was. And, and we just, it, the way we were able to do it was just, we just injected our ideas and like a new niece life into yeah. the business, you know, and, and we got a good vibe going with people and then they started coming back and we seen what we were doing and they were genuine enough. And I think it's like, we were there and like we weren't some sort of like aloof owners that were never in, in, in the building. Not. So we were there on the ground, we were like in there working. Yeah. And I think that sort of, maybe, I don't know, people saying that we were local people were, you know, people want to support. Putting into, putting the, yeah, into, yeah. This, into this business. So. And how did the staff take to this new approach to things? Well, they were grand. Like, they yeah. were, I think they were happy enough. Like, it is a very young workforce and sometimes they don't know um, any different. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So like, it was probably just, oh, it's a different different manager or whatever. In, but, yeah. but once we got into our, like, you know, now we have a, we have a brilliant group of kids and, and adults and all mixed in and they're all of the same we're all the same people we're all like, we're all like a big group of friends yeah, you know what I mean like yeah. I, always, I always say like it's a family and, and we, we fight like a family and we fight like a family so you know like you argue with people like a family but also you fight together as a family at the same time that's good to have as well it's about to see that there because you actually enjoy going in the work you do yeah, yeah. like it's like see going in the job where you actually hate yep. Like I, like I used to hate like retail myself, but when you're in a job that you love, it's good crack, you're with your yeah. mates. Um, one thing that I'd like to try to touch on is your strategy, um, trying to change that reputation about, mm -hmm. because it's bad starting off with no reputation, but I'd say it's even harder to start off with a bad reputation. Yeah. What was your strategy going into it? Did you just have like a, a plan right in three months, I want this, and six months, I want this, or was it just go with the flow it was, it was go with the flow so we got in the door and we seen what we were working with uh, and then we seen what we could change and, and and there was really like sort of obvious stuff that we could change like there weren't really like one of the things was they were banning like uh, like frozen vegetables and stuff and if you know that row of shops there's a veg, ah, there's a veg yeah. shop in the corner and we were like you're, you're also next door to the butchers why are you not getting your stuff like there was really really obvious stuff and that kind of pushed us on you know the, the we're going well this veg shop does these things we, we can use these in our menu and stuff and just yeah. sort of expand on what we were doing and then we're bringing our own ideas into it and and it, it's more of a, it's like a never flowing evolving creature with us yeah. i think you know sometimes like week to week like we're doing stuff this week that we don't think we were going to do last week yeah. sometimes it really sounds like i don't have a plan like but 
just go on with it. Just go but on with it sometimes. Like sometimes is, is that's a, the best way to be because with these times when you get a wee idea and you're just like, oh, that's class. Yeah. But when like, you're sitting there thinking, you're like, ah, uh, like I can't think of anything, but then you get that wee spark. The spark. Day. Well, there was one I, um, there was one of our most sort of popular pizzas is the Brooklyn, which is, it's a particular type, it's a particular type, of cheese goes on it, so it's like a sliced cheese and you put the cheese down first, sauce on it, it's finished. And I read about this place in New York and for 70 years they've been making this type of pizza, this yeah. pizza, right? And it was just, I, I was in, I was down in Moscow one day and I just walked and just seen a big block of cheese like that and I went, I can do that pizza. That's it. And it was that one, and, and then from there, like that's been, like if anybody... You like, found it? Yeah, that's our standout pizza, like, and it was just because it was in the back of my head about that place in New York, I did it for 70 years, and I walked into Moscow and seen this one block, and I was like, bingo, there we go. Sometimes well, the ideas just hit yeah, you like that, so, but yeah. And they're usually the best ones, yeah. like, as you say. And um, was there any word that, because North Belfast and West Belfast, all Belfast really is flooded with good pizza yeah. um, and good restaurants, was there anyone there that you would, like you said in the early days, I'd like to model myself, kind of, like off them or is there anyone who kind of inspired you yeah. with their businesses? There was a, not really in Belfast, and I don't mean to sound run down Belfast, like, yeah. a, like it, it is what it is, but sort of I was looking more like there's places in New York, there's, there's a place, in, a big inspiration for me was there's a place in New York called Roberta's, and they were kind of give like an attitude of, you know, whatever goes. Like I think they used to have like like, like big block parties and stuff, and they used to bring in like dirt cross motorbikes and just drive about the streets in, yeah. in New York, and, and it was a bit of a like, like, they were a bit of party animals and stuff, but oh. but uh, but I seen that they they could actually sort of channel that and create a business from it, you know, and just to, to kind of like do what they wanted. Yeah. So you, there, there's no set rules. You don't have to like like you don't have to have this particular pizza. They were going, oh, we could do whatever we want here. You know, it's it's and that kind of inspired me yeah. to to do it. And um, big inspiration to pizza world is, is there's a guy Anthony Falco, and he was sort of in the early days of Roberta, Roberta's. Yeah. Um, and I've just been following him, and that's always sort of inspired me to be able to bring that sort of kind of style to here. Have you made any connections with anyone, say, over in New York or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now, especially, the world's a lot a smaller place. Like, whenever social we first media. started, you couldn't really... Social media wasn't as, as big as what it was, you know, especially for businesses. But now, like, it's, it's the world's such a smaller place. Like, it's unbelievable. The, the, Anthony Falco, actually, what his job is, he goes around the world. Now, he's left Roberta's, but he's going around the world, and he sort of helps set up different businesses. So, like, he was in London, and I went over and met him in London and stuff. So, it, so it is somebody, and then he actually came to us as well. He was in Dublin, but he came up to see us as well. But Lethal. like, like, it, 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 you, you just message anybody, and it is. The, the, to be fair, the pizza community is really good. People are very open, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll chat. The likes of uh, flight and stuff. Like, I mess him all the time, and we have a chat. There's no sort of gatekeeping. You know, people yeah. don't. Like, if I said to him, "Where'd you, where'd you get that cheese from?" He would tell me. Uh, Same yeah, as I would tell him. We're, we're, there's, we're, like. He, he he sort of sees what I'm doing. I see what he's doing. It's, it's all good for Belfast and all good for pizza. So it's kind of. Was there any hostilities and like when you first started out, or um, like when you first started to to get more popular? Was there any hostilities from any other restaurants? Uh, there was well, sort of one of the first things that we did. Um, never we opened up was we had to look at the pricing, and the pricing was what well, was very cheap, and we were like, oh, yeah. we had to put up a wee bit. And uh, there was one, a local pizza place did put on their Facebook page, say, just seen a new menu from a pizza place. Oh my God, I can't believe the price. And I was like, come on, like, you know. <laughs> you know they're trying so, to do you dirty. They're trying to do us dirty, like. Uh, but to be fair, not really, not that I, not that my face anyway. Yeah. Like, it's, it's sort of, you just, I don't know. No, I wouldn't, no. I wouldn't say so, no, no. There's nobody do coming to do my Wendy's in or anything like that. <laughs> you do a lot of charity work. Yeah. Um, where did this all start like coming about? Has it always been revolved around like doing stuff through your business and stuff, or is it more of a personal thing for yourself? It's a bit of both, and I think you know having a business puts you in a position to be able to help people out more. Yeah, and, and that's what it is. And it, it mightn't be you mightn't raise thousands and thousands of pounds, but you might inspire somebody else to do something. That's yeah. the way I see it. Like there was um, there was a girl the other week. She had actually she couldn't collect her order. I, I think this is brilliant what she did. She couldn't collect the order and she messaged the page. She says, listen, I can't collect my order. Can you donate it off to somebody else? And I'll actually top up a wee bit more. And I'm going, well, would she have done that to anybody else if she didn't know that we were sort of had contacts to, yeah. to do like the, the charity work and stuff? So, Fair play. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Awesome. Like, like, that's, that's great. Like, why, why she didn't have to do that? She could have said, can I cancel my order and get my money back? But she went, no. Uh, so we sent it off um, to the hospice or taking it. So there's, there's 
class. And it's good contacts to have. Yeah. I mean, I just think being in a position where you can help people, you should. 100%. And be it sponsor a football team or be it donate prizes to the school or, or whatever. Like, it's just, just do it. Like it's Being um, an ex-student of Somalgis, mm-hmm. do you do much work with them or do you... Well, not with the school directly, no, but we sort of I'm I'm helping with the, the football team, which is like an off spout of the like the old, there's like an old boys association yeah, down the road. Uh, so I used to play for the football team and then a while ago we decided to create a kids' football team, which is it's Somalia's old boys youth it's called. Um but it has really, really, really taken off. It's like it's off. it's uh, like you know, the amount of kids nowadays that are that, that like that are part of this club, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. How and do you find it? Like working with kids? I love it. I think it's brilliant, and particularly I, I've I coached a boys' football team for years, but uh, and I kind of I had to kind of because they were going to Friday night matches, and I obviously couldn't do Friday night with working and stuff. So uh, two years ago, I started the girls' team, and the girls' team is brilliant, and I love the fact that there's now an opportunity for girls to play football because it never was yeah, before. Like, like a, it's the it, talk of like a lost generation with with women footballers, like Dexter Clara never. She never got the opportunity, never got offered yeah. a chance to play for a team unless she really seeked it out. But now, like, we have four teams running for one particular age group. It's probably the biggest of, of our age group, girls team in Belfast, I would say. What like age that. group would that be? So it's 2015, it's 2016, so it's like eight, nine year old yeah. girls. Um, but they love it. Just uh, all fun. Just all fun, they love it. But I always, sometimes I think we boys sort of, you know, get pushed into football and, yeah. and, and you know, a bit of pressure a bit of pressure a bit of expectation your wee yeah. boy go play football but with the girls it's completely different like the, the, they want to be there and they're eager to learn and like they, they love it they really yeah. do love the football if you ask any of our parents they always comment about how much the girls love football which is brilliant Amazing. it's brilliant like uh, my ma said so my ma has seven grandkids six girls and one boy and she thought when she got them, because me, me and my brother were always playing football in the garden, and we racked, we completely racked our garden playing football all the time. We just play football. So when she got all these grandkids, she was like, "Finally, finally, away from this football." Every single one of them plays football. All six girls, and the wee fella is the only one that doesn't, that doesn't really, doesn't really want to play football. But all, all the six girls just love the football, which is good. Do you sponsor that team as well? I, I, well, I don't. I sponsor another team. Uh, just sometimes what happens is you sponsor a team and the kids get past yeah, there, but, oh, but, but I've sponsored loads of the teams o- over the years. Like it's, Is there any um, charitable event that stands out for you that you've run or something you've done yourself? Uh, I mean, we did do a, we, we did a paid forward scheme, which I thought was very good. Um, so it gives the opportunity for, there, there's a place, I forget where it is, I think it's New York, I think it's like a coffee shop or whatever, but you can walk in. And they do it on post-it notes. You walk in, you buy a coffee, and you can also buy a coffee for somebody else. And yeah. you write your name on the post-it note and stick the post-it note in the wall. And if somebody doesn't have money for a coffee, they come in, grab the post-it note off the wall and do it. So I seen that and I was like, here, that's a brilliant idea. So I ran that one year and uh, it really took off. It was over Christmas. So people were coming in and going, right, there's my order. And can I also buy a wee pizza for the wall? And I was just writing people's names on it and sticking it on the wall. And then we ended up getting like over, I think it was over 500, 600. Pizzas, the the, the, the local, that are customers. But it was yeah. not. I didn't buy them. Like it was, it was, it was you know, the, the, the customers community. of ours, the community. Yeah. So it was giving the community the chance to, to sort of do, do the good work. And then, sort of over the course of the year, then we sort of dripped it out to different organisations and Class. stuff. It was really good. Yeah, that was a really good one. Would you say that you are like a community in Pizza Works and like your work staff and then your customers as well? I'd say you've had this, like, or some customers you've had there for the entire twelve. Oh, years, I, yeah, 12, yeah, definitely, years. yeah. I mean. I, I say to the, the staff as well, don't be afraid to like, you know, sometimes you go to these places and, and the, the sort of repertoire with the, the staff is a wee bit forced, you know, like if you go to a coffee shop sometimes you find them asking, you know, so what's your plans for today? And it's uh, a wee bit forced. Yeah. But I say to my own, don't be afraid to, to have a bit of crack them or, or slag them or something. Like there, there's a guy who comes in and he comes in every Saturday night a quarter past eight. And when he walks in the door, we go, why? Like, where else would you get it? Like, you know, so I kind of encourage that. To do, we, we've actually got a wee bell hanging up on the roof and we think a bell now when he comes in. But just like, just do something different. Just to, so to create that good feeling whenever you walk into the place. Like it's, you can feel like, especially like I think that energy, like it doesn't lie. Yeah. And like, like good energy and good vibes. That attracts like people more than yeah. a promotion would. Yeah, like definitely. Sometimes. I mean, like you walk into us and we always have the music playing. Music is always a big thing for us. Like sometimes you could walk in and we listen to Metallica or we listen to Barbara Streisand. Yeah, and I love the fact people could be going home going, Jesus, I was in Pizza Works there and they were listening to some, some death metal. And I walked in and they were listening to Barbara Streisand. What, 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 like it's a good crack. Like sometimes you come in and you, and you hear people going, 
what are you listening to? Or you stick the phone on shuffle. Aye, uh, yeah, yeah, just and then that's you. Yeah, yeah. Class. See, um, one thing that I was thinking about earlier, because I was like obviously going through this here, just trying to prepare my questions and stuff. And COVID, especially in Belfast, hit a lot of businesses yeah. hard, and some businesses closed down. How did you manage to stay afloat during COVID? We, we were sort of one of those lucky ones with COVID. I think there was still like the demand there for people to get food. Like yeah. were, people are always uh, wanting pizzas and stuff. So we, we did close for six weeks during COVID, but. Covid completely changed what we had to do because we before we had sort of a restaurant, a sitting area where people could come and um, you know it was bring your own, they could bring wine, and whatever else, and have a few pizzas. But once Covid hit, it was all closed yeah, down. Couldn't. And then we got so busy during Covid, we couldn't cope. We, we literally couldn't cope with what our sort of infrastructure was. So we completely got it. You know, I think it was it was sort of this, the second bit of Covid. We just closed again and then just completely got the place out and doubled up what we were yeah. we were doing and, and now that's still the way we are you know it's it's we were able to double our output because the demand was there for it um but a lot of people still miss us a lot of people always say this is about to sit in like it's 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 a touchy subject uh, with some people, like, some people. It, like i loved it because it's good to feel the vibe you know when you're working and it's a full restaurant people have a bit of crack like yeah. like it's good like it, it's but people still give me grief about that, you know. I can't believe you closed your set in. I was like, I had to. There's, there's no other option. What like, did you want me to do? do you? I know, what do you want me to do? <laughs> we we literally couldn't cope with the amount of orders we were getting. Like, it was, it was crazy. And another good thing, sort of, from that was it kind of forces the, the tackle the online sort of yeah. side of it. So we had to, like, completely get a completely new online system, which now is literally over half of our business is now sort of online ordering. Yeah. Because a lot of people don't like pick up the phone and order. Like, like, I don't particularly like or no, no phone from somewhere so yep. it was good we kind of got in during Covid and got in early with it and all and, and we're still like we're sort of really against these sort of delivery and, and just eat because yeah. they, they really take advantage they take a piss like, the, like what they take so we're, we're still completely independent online you know ordering system yeah. we, we, just, and we have full control over it and we don't have to pay any third party or anything like that so how did you find adapting your game to meet this new like this new demand did you think it was easy for yourselves or I, I sort of struggle? No, it wasn't. It was. I had an idea in my head. I, sometimes my ideas come from seeing what other people. Yeah. It's still an idea, like, but you see what other people. And it was a setup I had seen. Um, it was actually Falco had set it up in a place in Canada, and he had run it as like two completely. You sort of, we, we sort of work as a team. So the way I had it before was we we just did everything. So everybody did collections, everybody did deliveries, everybody did the sitting. Um. But my sort of, I envisioned it as splitting it into two. So you had one one sort of team doing all your collections and one team doing all your deliveries and you're just continuously banging it out and with two new ovens in. And that's what I had in my head that would work. And it did work because you, you, you're sort of, you're, you're focusing each each sort of area. So your collections are just flying out yeah, and yeah. deliveries are going out and everybody's just working away in clockwork. And, and, and clockwork, yeah. Class. So one, one of the things which you do is collaboration with comedians. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What's that like? Because like Karen Barter, I think. He's brilliant. Gig. Yeah, he's brilliant. Probably, I would say, the best out of that group of like him and Shane yeah. Todd and stuff and, and William like Thompson. Um, he is like he's the best. We went and seen him one night in um in Lowry's and I had never laughed as much <laughs> in my life. I swear to God, like it was just see his interaction with people. Yeah. Like like it was. You, you know, you see the clips of him where he's, where he's shouting at somebody. Will you? Oh, I'm trying to do this here. You I, I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> But we, um, no, it's again, it's back to the sort of the charity. Every, every Christmas we like to do sort of a collaboration with charity, somehow to raise money. And it was, um, we thought about, we thought he high and went forget us and we got him. Like, it was, it was we, we asked uh, him to come. He actually, I think, the way I came about it was he had mentioned on a podcast he would love to get a pizza on somebody's menu. And we were like, here, can we do it? And we tried for right ages and ages and ages to get him. And we couldn't get, he must be just like so busy. It was, yeah, it was, it was so hard to get through. But I think we ended up getting, one day it, it just popped up. Can I get us? Yeah, I'd love to do it. So we did that. We got him over. He he created his own pizza, put in the board, um, and we did it for a, a charity. Um, and it was it was brilliant. And it was like the exposure, like, like sometimes you kind of, you don't want it to seem like you're doing it too much for the business. And I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I generally say, want to say that. But like, you are in business. At the, but you are in business at the same time, yeah. But I don't. I do, I do it for, like, you know, the good that it could, yeah. could do. And we raise a good bit of money. Um, 
But uh, the day that he came, it was him and Rory Woods, and it was it was unbelievable. Like, the, like they're proper professionals. Like sometimes you see them, like the way they work, is class. But Kieran Bartlett as well, he loves. He would always come into us. Um, so I'm really hoping that he's going to put us on this. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the next series of this comedian's getting fat and chippy, so I'm hoping uh, he can come down to that with us, maybe. So, what's he um, like to have in there in the shop? Two people see, like, see when he walks in, are they like, fuck, I'm scared. Sure, right, well, there, was, there was a wee guy, he, he came in one time, um, the order, and I, was, I, I started when I was in, had a wee chat with him, and there was one of the young fellas around the back, and I went around his head, and he, go, he was like, oh, so I'm fucking Karen Barton, and I was like, and he goes, I, I love it, like, he was, de- he was dead, dead, dead nervous. He goes, I've got tickets to the show. And I was like, why didn't you go and say hello? And he goes, I was too nervous. And I was like, right, see you next time he's in. Go up and say hello to him. And I uh, came back in maybe, it was a couple of weeks later. And I didn't even, I didn't even think about saying to, the, saying to Brooklyn about going, going off. But uh, I, I was just working away and I looked and there was a wee Brooklyn over them, you know, chatting away. And uh, I was like, fair play, kid, go over. Do you know what well I mean? Done. Like, he actually, he actually did it. But um, I think I, comedian, like, it's probably hard for comedians, like whenever they meet members of the public, they yeah. say, be funny for me, be funny for me, <laughs> tell me a joke or something, you know, like I wouldn't, wouldn't fancy it myself. Like. Be good to have, like, a Shane, like Shane Todd seems to have taken yeah. off big time. Like, yeah. like I remember he came in the Auto on Youth Club when I was, I think I was like 17 or 18, yeah. and he got absolutely roasted. Oh, really? He, got, he tried to get up and tell a joke. He actually done a thing about it on um, on a stand up. Oh, he turned into a bit, has he? Yeah. Uh, about the time he came in, and I remembered, and he just got absolutely roasted. They were like, "You are shit." <laughs> just lads from Ardo in the shackle just said, "You are shit." But that probably that was probably part of his development. Ah, here character building. Character building. No, hundred percent. You know, he knows how to deal with hacklers, probably. As I would say, but who would be the most famous, or not most famous, but most well known person that you've had in the shop? Is there? Do we get the likes of Tim McGarry or anyone? Yeah, Tim McGarry, yeah, yeah. He, comes, he doesn't like pizza though, so he likes chips. He likes our chips. But his, 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 his son, I think, is always orders, Tim McGarry comes in. Um, famous people, I don't know. There's, <laughs> it's really weird, we've got, because um, oh, we are nerds and sometimes we're like, sometimes you really embarrass yourself the way we get on. But there, there's one guy that comes in, um, like, he's a, like he's an actor, but yeah. like, he, he, have you seen the, the show Dag Leash? No, you don't know Dag Leash. I was actually supposed to be an extra on that because I do a load of extra work but I just didn't show up one day because I didn't no. know what the thing was and I go oh fuck I'm like I'm not doing it but the guy the guy who's Doug Lee it's a guy called Bertie Carville and he I think he was in he's in The Crown I think as well but he comes into us and every time we come in we're like where's Bertie but nobody would know like if you uh, said who's Bertie they, they would know but we're like where's Bertie Carville um, else I don't know I don't know I don't know like it's how do you manage to stay relevant in the competition, because there's a lot of competition yeah. nowadays, especially um, about Belfast. Yeah. What sh- what stand or what makes you stand apart from the rest? Do you think? I just. So I, I think it's sort of it's maybe two things. W- one is what I could do is I always keep an eye on what everybody else is doing, especially in America. Like I always say, people say, "What style of your pizzas are, you, are, are yours?" And I go, "American." And they're like, what do you mean American? I said, well, when I was growing up, pizzas were American. They weren't Italian, they were American. Yeah. You know, it was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, or it was like Home Alone, or it was always the movies. Kevin McCallister. So that was the sort of the, the sort of style I always had in my head as a sort of American. So I always keep an eye on what, what they do. So that's one side of it is, and, and, and I have no qualms about like going, if I do a special saying, it's from this pizza place, and that's their pizza, yeah. and I'm bringing it to here. And this is my version, but I'll always, always shout back. So there's always that's always one way I think of keeping ahead of it. Another way is just doing something different, just something that you that, 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 out. something stands out, something that you wouldn't regularly get. I mean, there's pizza places that, that have been open in Belfast for years and probably haven't changed the menu at all. Like we we, uh, we change it all all the time. We have our, we have our regular rotating specials, but it is finding that thing that is different. So it is yeah. creating something different yourself and also seeing maybe something out there that's different and, and bringing it. Bring it over here. America always seems to be just no matter what it is, always seems to be that few steps ahead yeah. of, of Europe and yeah. especially Ireland as well because we are like in the dark ages, we're like ten years behind. But uh, we're everything. getting better. Like I definitely are getting better. Like, like if you look at like the flight, brilliant. Like like the press he's getting for Belfast is incredible. Yeah, it's proper incredible. Blows me away. He's only open two years. Like it's it's it's, it's unreal and and fair play them, brilliant. You've got the likes of Bambinos and all in Dublin. People are shouting about. It's great. I, I really think. I, I think especially food Dublin. Dublin as a city with food is getting is getting yeah. brilliant. Uh, we would have went over to London a lot. You know, just like me and Clara, maybe you know, once or twice a year we would have went over. People say, "What do you go to London for?" We go to, to eat and drink, just to go around different places, eat and drink. 
But now we're going to Dublin. Dublin's getting so much better. It's expensive, like, but it's yeah. still, it's, 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 it's oh, good. Dublin is, I went down um, in June for Aunt Donna Kennedy. Yeah. And see the money that you spend down there, like, it's, it's mental. Like four or five days abroad, like, it's yeah. scary, like. We went to, um, went to Stockholm just before Christmas, just like as a, me and my mate would go away every so often. And uh, I thought, we're just sitting, we'll just have a few pints all day long. But it's, it's a pound a pint, and like, like Whenever you get going for the day, like it's you're down an absolute you. fortune. But that one's about like ah, seven yeah. or eight pound as well. Like it's hundred percent. Um, when I was going through your profile, just doing the kind of research, seeing you're some Pauly fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, how did that come about? Because that's that's a bit of a it, well, it was kind of we with, with a group of friends, and we always had like it was a batting group. We always put sort of bets and took turns batting, and talking yeah. about football. It was a group, group of Punters six club. friends, Punters Club. Yeah. Exactly what it is. Uh, and um, we started doing, thinking about going up, doing an away day. You know, like we'll all go away and we'll pick a really random football team and we'll go uh, and we'll watch them. So the first one that sort of came up was St. Pauli. And we were like, here, let's go there. It looks class. We went and it just blew our minds. It just blew our minds that there's the fact that there was a football team out there that, you know, fought for or believed in what they fought. Like, 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 like yeah. they're, they're, they're anti racist, anti homophobic, anti fascist. You, like, like, you name it. Like, like, and they actually stand uh, against it uh, as a club and as a team and the support of brilliance. So we went and we were like, oh, this is unreal. And I, I still take like a certain amount of that back into, uh, in, into myself and into the business and, and yeah. into the football team and stuff. Like just, just the fact that there, there is a chance, or that there is a football team out there. You can do things, I guess. Yeah, That's what yeah. it is. You, know, you, can, you can go and you do things. And then it was sort of the next year we went and we went to Madrid and there's a team called Real. We looked at Madrid and went, there's Real and there's Atletico, but there's another wee team in Madrid called Real Vallecano. Yeah, right? yeah, I've seen them. So they're like the last uh, neighbourhood in Madrid that hasn't been gentrified yet, so it's still a real strong and their stadium working... stadium looks, looks mad. Yeah, it's a real strong working class community just in the middle of, of Madrid. And they're very similar to St Pauli. They're, they're a very left-wing club, and, and again, they're against fascism, against racism, against homophobia, against sexism. Yeah. Like, they're the same sort of, you know... Ideas and beliefs, but we went there and it was a good, it was a good wee trip, but it was nothing on, on St Pauli. So we kept coming back, and it's just, it's just the fact that there's a club there that, that actually, like you go to these matches and people are, are shouting all sorts from the stands, uh -huh. and you know, and but they don't allow that, you're not allowed to do that, you can't do that, you know, they're they're against it. So, and do they still like are they in Bundesliga two? They're they're Bundesliga two, but they're top yeah. of the league now, so they're looking like they're getting promoted, um, which is it's kind of with them, and so they're very like. It's sort of like a punk ethos through it, you know, like yeah. they, 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 they're very, they're also anti-capitalist as well, kind of, so they're kind of, they, they're, they're the left-wing club, the, the most left-wing club you could probably get. get. But also the most recognisable and the, also the most brandable club, like, yeah. the, you know, like that's Skull and Crossbones, like it's, and they're, they're sort of like, what do we do, do we capitalise on, you know, we do need money to run a football club, yeah. but they would push it too far, so it's I think this push up. as well, isn't it? It's like a, all, all clubs in Germany are fandom, so it's like, it's, if you, 50, if, 50 plus one is, uh, yeah, so one. they're all, well, I think there's, there's one or two, I think some of the better ones, you know, like the, the corporations, somehow uh, they, yeah. they, 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 they sort of Hoffenheim go, and stuff like that, go around that um, rule, but, but the, 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 the football match say in Germany is completely different. Than here, I was nothing as well because we went and you know the stadium and it was a bar and you could you were like what you can you can stand here and drink pints and watch football like at the same time this is this is unreal, but the stuff like um, like your train ticket and all is included in the price of your of your ticket for the ground Seriously? and stuff so it's just it's just so much different and it's the experience. it's modern football is, is is crazy whenever you hear uh, teams like spending hundreds of millions on players. It goes back to the football manager days. You know that's why like the the wee low league yeah, teams. You, know, yeah. you, you get a wee loan signing from somebody. That's, you can kind of what would the word be for it? I relate more. Yes. Uh, them like kind of clubs. Did you ever come into contact with any Hamburg fans or anything when you were out? No, there no, 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 no. There was one time we. Um, because in, in Hamburg, there's a big main street, it's called the Reaperman. Have you heard of that? It's, like, no. it's, it's the second biggest, it's, it's like all stag parties, but it's also the second biggest red light district yeah. in Europe, right? Um, so one side of it is St. Pauli, and the other side of it is, but we were, it's Hamburg, but we were walking up, and the policeman just stopped us and just went, No. And we're like, Well, what's wrong? And he goes, You will get punched in the head. St. Pauli, punched in the head. And we're like, Right, no sweat. And that was it, that was our lesson, and we just didn't, so we stayed on the, on the one side. It's like anywhere, you don't yeah. know. 
the Incredible. city in itself is a bit mad because Hamburg are kind of like the extreme right yeah. in European football and then St Pauli are the extreme yeah. left which is a bit interesting like it's definitely some place that they got is on the list to go yeah, to. to, go to yeah. I'd love to do an away day there. Yeah. Um, you seem to have done a, a good bit of travelling. Like, yeah. like as you were saying before, we started this year. You went to India for three months. Um, where has been the most interesting place? You've well, been it was India. Sorry, before we actually had the pizza place. So it was two thousand and nine. So it was like what was it 16, 15 years ago we did that. It's and and India is is an incredible country. It's honestly, it's it's fascinating. The people are lovely, but it's also it's an extremely poor country. And yeah. the contrast between poor and, and rich, I think it's one of the biggest sort of gaps in the world. Like you have these mega rich people there, but also these people that have nothing. Like, but um, no, India was was unbelievable country. Like it's just the people, as we said earlier on. We whenever we travelled around it, we sort of went. It's called the sleeper class, so it's like the like the real third class travel yeah. and. The, and the people just couldn't believe that we were doing it. We were like, well, this is, we were backpacking, so we had no money, so it was the cheapest way around. But all they wanted to do was to talk English to you and to, to practice their English. And I suppose they as a way, you know, of benefiting themselves. But yeah, that was big country. And the food as well is incredible. Was that the only place you went to during that time? Um, we, 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 went to, um, we went to Vietnam and did that sort of usual uh, Vietnam, Thailand. There's Cambodia. But, but, and but, stuff. but, but yeah, Cambodia. I love Cambodia. Cambodia is another very sad country. Very, like, I've heard some mad stories yeah, there. My uncle went, and he says that the army there, that they brought them into the, like a base, and you could buy for the right amount of money, you could buy any weapon that you wanted. Yeah. They're they're very corrupt. I think it's. He says that that was an unbelievable experience. The yeah. place. But um, is that the kind of you wouldn't be in the like say say. Going to like a beef and stuff like that, or you'd rather go out and, yeah. and experience it's more the city break kind of person. I think it's not that there's nothing normal going to a beef or going, or going on an island party holiday, but I, I just think you know, going to a different city or a different try to go to different countries each time, you know, it's, yeah. it sort of broadens your horizons. And, and again, it's that wee idea sometimes you'll go somewhere and you'll see something, you'll go, oh, maybe, I'll, uh, maybe I'll apply that back. And do you do any or plan your holidays round? Places you want to see, like or taste their food or anything. Yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. You kind of yeah, like for, well, send about Stockholm there. Like there's, because I actually I'm in them. I bring my own beer as well. So there's a there's a, a place in Stockholm called On the Polos, and it's like uh, they do these most mental sort of like sour beers and things like that. Yeah. And that was where I, I just wanted to go to this one place. I seen it like as a beer heaven, so I arranged that to go there. And it's stuff like whenever Fog was in London. Like arrange just to go the same. You may as well. You, like you, you do only live once, and it's it's all about these experiences. That's it. Like, and you're here for a good time, not a long time. That's right. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Um, what's your opinion on IPAs? I love IPAs. Do you? But they're on the slide yeah. now. They're on their way out. Apparent is what I hear, but I still love them. Yeah. Uh, a more. I like a good hazy IPA. Do you like IPAs or do you think but too, sometimes people just uh, the they're, last they're, time I drunk I threw up everywhere. So I just. <laughs> there's a brilliant. Um, there's a brilliant Instagram page, and it's called. It's, it's called something like my granddad tries IPAs and this guy he just gets his granddad to try IPAs and he'll say that's fucking stinking but every so often he'll get one he likes and that's why it is the IPA sometimes you just have to keep trying them specific taste like isn't it yeah yeah, it is, yeah. It is. it's more it is like a hipster kind of thing oh like, it is yeah. about it. but don't get me wrong like I'm a Guinness drinker at heart Guinness drinker all day long three like three. I, you know, I three and three you could drink it all day long Guinness <laughs> is oh it's great like I'm more of a basic bitch Carlsberg <laughs> don't know why don't know why I'm wait, see it. <laughs> <laughs> Carsberg is. Do you know what I think it is? Because I'm a Liverpool man. Carsberg. Oh, I did. The, 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 the kids sponsor. So when I first started drinking, I was like, fuck, Carsberg. And then, <laughs> did you ever go to Kelly's? Or what used to be Kelly's? Well, I, used to, I, I went to university in Korean. So. Did you stay to, down there as well? Yeah, I stayed down uh -huh. there, yeah. So, but there used to be a bus every Wednesday to Kelly's. Student night. Uh, unreal. <laughs> two quid for a tin of ah, thing. You're just throwing them in your pocket. Pack just, like, I think used to give you a bag as well. Uh, like whenever we were there, used to give you a bag and you used to tie it to your thing. So you just crushed your cans and put it in the bag yeah, and away then. you went. I caused work, but then started to take a real taste for Hennigan. Yeah. Hennigan's. Have you yeah. been to the Hennigan factory in Amsterdam? Uh, nah. No. It's good, it's good. As a brewery tour, like it's. I've been there twice. But I've never done any of the tours. Amsterdam? Things. Ah, yeah. I love it. Amsterdam's great. We, we were there for my 40th last year there. It was brilliant. Uh, we went to Amsterdam and then we got the train to Dusseldorf and Cologne. And it's like, oh, see yeah. that train journey. Have you ever, have you ever looking at a wee something different? Because it's only like, it's like two and a half hours you're in Germany. You're somewhere yeah. different. But the countryside's beautiful. Like it's, Class. and Amsterdam itself was just. All that there. Mm -hmm. And we actually, 
when we got back, it was um, it was the King's Day when we got back, and it was you want to say that for all, all the boats going down the canals and everybody was just out party. The Dutch love love a good party, yeah. like so. Leifel, where would be your favourite place to go? Where's your ideal location? That I haven't been would be Japan. I love to go to uh -huh. Tokyo. Yeah, I just I just I just like it looks class. It looks yeah. something like a film. Well, yeah, like, like something futuristic out of a yeah. film. Yeah, I, lo I love um. You know, the film Blade Runner, in a way, that's kind of like sort of that futuristic sort of the neon lights. Yeah. And like I've always wanted, that's, I think Tokyo will be a unique experience. Like Seoul as well, I think. So. Yeah, Seoul's supposed to be, and Shanghai that's as well, supposed to be very much like it. Is, oh. So, where would be the best place you've been to this date? I'll probably say India again, back to India. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. The guy went it because you're um, in the St. Paul and stuff like yeah. that there, and that kind of said, um, I went a few years ago to Palestine, and uh, not there, well, obviously you couldn't really go in Ireland because yeah. it's, it's chaos out there. Yeah. But that there are the people and stuff like that there as well, when you were saying about India, and the people, like, like how they are and speaking English and all to you, mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of there, just like yeah. very nice people down the earth. Down the earth, people, yeah. Just want to speak to you and learn it's as well. The, the, it's people that have, not, that have nothing that are probably the most honest. Like, yeah. like, the, like the, what else can they? They, they can't give you uh, anything, like so they can only give themselves, I suppose. Okay. Is, is what you okay. is the most like valuable thing as well, yeah. I think. So, for someone starting out in the restaurant game now, what advice would you give them? Which you wish that you heard yourself? Uh, people like I've been asked before, like by people starting businesses, and I, I just say to them, shit your pants and jump in. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Straight in. You'll regret it if you don't. Do you know what I mean? Just just shit your pants and jump in. And if it fails, it fails. But at least you had a go at it. Nobody, well, I th people did say it. People said, you, you will regret it. Yeah. You regret it if you don't try. So I think that, it, just, just if it, if it falls in your arse, so what? At least you give it a go. And you are very successful, like, especially in Belfast, I'd say. Um, why haven't you, or have you ever thought about opening up another store? Oh, we get tortured about that, everybody. When you open in West Belfast, when you open up in Glen Gormley, when you open up, like, uh, it's hard. Work. It, is it looks hard work. like you haven't set up any home kit accessories. <laughs> what, what did I say? Oh dear. Oh dear. That's a good wee flavor. We'll keep that in anyway. Um, <laughs> no, it's it, it's incredibly hard work, and and as appealing as it sounds to have multiple stores, I don't know how much it would work with us not being on the front line of it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Not that you can't trust people. It's just certain stuff you yourself. As a business owner, you can't faith let slide. In the yeah, yeah, putting a lot of faith in somebody, you can't let slide. So as much as we'd love to be able to do that, and maybe down the lines, if, if we are taking a, a bit to step back, maybe. But I, I just don't want to compromise on what we have down there. Yeah. And like the thing is as well, like people, you hear people coming, or so when are you going up in West Belfast? I have to drive from West Belfast to get to you. And I'm going. Well, you're driving from West Belfast, uh, get this why do I have to open up over there, do you know what I mean? Like, Belfast is a small place as well. It's a small like, place, like, it is, yeah. Like, it's not like they're having to travel, say, half an hour, no, yeah. I mean, you're kind of 20 minutes away from everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, who knows what the future will bring? I could have that wee, I could, see, I could see somewhere and go, eh, well, you know. Might you were be. saying there um, earlier about your wife. Yes. How important has she been in, in this business? Like, I wouldn't be there without her. Like she is, as I say, she's she's a creative driving force. Yeah. I, I see I see myself as like I'm, I'm like a workhorse because I can because obviously with their circumstances and the kids and all, somebody needs to like and it's it's she's she's natural mother as well and she's brilliant at that, but she's very creative. Um, as I say, I'm a bit of a workhorse. Like I'll do the work, I'll do whatever needs done. Yeah. But without her, I wouldn't. She keeps me on the right right path, you know, like she'll keep me in check about things as well, which, which is sometimes but I'd have all sorts of going on if it, if it didn't. Like, you, know? you need that balance as well. You do, like yeah, hundred percent. Like a bit of a grafter and then the brains as well. Yeah. Not saying that you don't have brains, but she's got that creativity about her as yeah, well. Yeah. And so it kind of balances it out. What I mean, I did a I did a business degree and I don't use any of it. But she does all like the books and all, you know, the wages and, and, and the, the tax and the, the national insurance. She does all that. Uh, and sitting them on the business degree. But she's just Good at it, like it's so stressful enough in itself. It is, hundred percent. That That's like some people don't don't see like what goes on. Like sometimes I think people think that like my job sort of starts and ends when I walk in and out that door, but it doesn't. It's just constant. Yeah, it's constant. Like it's, it just doesn't stop. You're, you're especially now with um, the way social media and all is. You're, you're constantly connected to your work constantly. Leaving and then your phone. Your phone goes. On the page. Your phone goes. Page is going. And um, it's like. Sometimes people kind of forget that there is like like a human being behind these businesses. Like like there was, 
like, I remember speaking to comedy nights, I was going to a comedy night one time, and I was just getting out of the car, and I like ping one star review, and I was going, like it ruined, it ruined your night. Bastards. Uh, you're like, bastards. And like, and like, why didn't you pick, we're by no means perfect, right? Yeah. No, nobody's perfect when it comes to like making things or, or creating food. We're by no means perfect, but we always say to people, if we, if we mess up, phone us and we'll fix it. We will, and I tell myself that, just fix it. Sometimes like you'll get, somebody will go, oh, they got the wrong and maybe somebody mightn't believe and I go, just fix it. It's easier just to fix it than to get this. Do you know what I mean? But people these days just find it too easy to do that. Yeah. Far too easy. They don't want to, they don't want to. They don't want to speak. Speak to you. And then sometimes, <laughs> then that's kind of like, sometimes you do get the ones that do you want to speak to you and then they treat you like absolute shit. Like, 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 oh, fucking right. It's like, have you ever had any experiences like that there? Oh, oh. <laughs> I've got laid in there. <laughs> For a few, yes, definitely. <laughs> but the, I always, um, like as soon as, as soon as somebody starts swearing at you, I, I cut it, I go, listen. Especially the staff, because I always say, listen, they're not paid to be swore at. I can swear at them, because they're my staff. Yeah. <laughs> but you just can't, and as soon as you start swearing, that's it. Like I've had, I've had people make like 16 year old girls cry because of the way they've reacted over pizza. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's ridiculous sometimes. Just like, thanks. just, yeah, just, if there's a problem, no. we'll, we'll sort it out. We'll, we'll, we'll always see you right. Yeah, there's bigger problems. <laughs> there's bigger in the problems world. in the world. That's, there's one phrase, and I hate it when people say it, that's a disgrace. And I'm going, it's not a disgrace. There's, there's a whole lot more in the world yeah. going on, it's a disgrace. If you've got the wrong pizza, it's not the end of the world, you know. We'll fix it for you, like, but it's not, it's not a fucking disgrace. Like, it's... How do you deal with um, doubt? Do you ever feel doubt and say you're launching a new pizza or even in the early days? Oh, I, I still get a massive imposter syndrome. Like, uh, sometimes I feel like I shouldn't be, you know, like, like, sometimes whenever people go, oh, I had one of your pizzas last night, the first thing I go on is, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, fuck, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. <laughs> like, it was great. And I was like, oh, thank fuck. <laughs> but it's, like, it's always, there's always a certain amount. I don't know if it's natural to, to me to be doubtful of myself, but I do feel... You know, like shouldn't be maybe as good as yeah. what we are or something like that. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Like I think it's kind of, not Belfast, but even Northern Ireland as well. You know, like no one really kind of believes in themselves that there are much. Yeah. Where when you do get positive feedback, you're kind of like, uh, all right. So what, <laughs> yeah, you what? do not believe it sometimes. Yeah, sometimes people like, say, what oh, I say here? Oh, pizza was good. I was like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, it's always, or always, I don't know, it's weird. Like it's... How do you deal with negativity? From like... Just customers and just it, it, life. It really depends what kind of mood you're in. Sometimes you can just shrug it off. Like, but if yeah. you've had a rough run of, like, if you're tired, if you're down, and like, it, it just doesn't help sometimes. Yeah. And it's, it is hard to shrug off. But yeah, you just sometimes you gotta you gotta roll with it. Like, you, you do, you've, you've, you've got to roll with it. But you have to take like the good. Oh, why? A hundred percent. And you need to take both on board. Like, and that's uh, that's the way you get better. At things is is you do, you know, you look at what you did wrong and. You like I like it. There's sometimes they will make a mistake, and if it's a big mistake, I always say they'll not do that again. Yeah. And you and you, you won't if it's a big one and it, and it costs you or embarrasses you or whatever else. You'll not do it again. Like hundred so. percent. That's where you learn as well, especially it's like it's being thrown in the um see the deep end as we said earlier. Yeah. Um, but do you take on board because I know there's certain people that are able to handle more bad criticism than good criticism or not good criticism but good comments. Yeah. Um. Do you, like, how do you, like, how do you handle it? Um, do you handle the bad criticism more or the comments, or the good comments more? You always have to take a bad criticism more like you always do. You, you, can, you can't help it. Yeah. I, think, I think it's natural just to, to take it on board. Like, it's, it affects you the most. People could tell you, like, like I go home, I'll, I'll have one bad incident or something a night, and I'll go home to Clara and I'll be like, oh, fuck, this happened. Clara goes, but look at all the other people you served. Do you know what I mean? Look at all yeah. of them. Although they're not coming back and going, yeah, pizza was good then. They'll be back next week. But sometimes it is that one. Yeah. Just that one wee incident and it'll, it'll ruin it. But sometimes you need to be brought back up. And Clara's very good at that. She will say, sure. Look how busy you were. Like, like, it wouldn't the, the, the be fact that you were flat. busy if you were... Yeah. And sometimes, classic. she said, it is a good, it is a good balance. Now, but sometimes you do need that person to kind of go... To, to look at it from a different point of view. Nearly, yeah, so. yeah, 100%. Um, who would be your inspiration? For business or just in life? <laughs> I'd, uh, well, obviously, obviously, my family, like, like my kids, and all is an inspiration for me. You know, like, like as I said to you, I wanted to be. My dad worked these mental hours, and and, and he was a grafter, and, and 
like that's the way I seen him as, as grass. I remember my mum was work, she was always working evenings as well, like uh, and that sort of is how I want to be seen as well to my kids. Yeah. As a worker, somebody who worked for his family. So that's a big inspiration for me. Business wise, like whenever we opened, I always said um, there was two people I wanted to walk in the, in them doors. One was Anthony Bourdain and one was Anthony Falco. So they're two big inspirations for me. Um, Falco came and seen us two years ago. He was in Dublin helping set up one, but he came and seen us and it was brilliant. And it was a Saturday night as well, and we were we were busy, we were bung to the bung to the gills, like and it was and he was just watching and he was just seeing it. Um, but Bourdain, Bourdain, like, is that's that's the way I the, the way I like to run things in there. Is if you've ever read any of Bourdain's books, no, nah. read Kitchen Confidence, right? It's a, it's an unbelievable book, and it's just the way he talks about it's like a motley crew of pirates nearly <laughs> they are in there, and that's what we're like, yeah. you know, like we're all like a mixed batch. Of we're, we're just a mixed everyone. batch of everyone, but we all work together, and it's that's the way that like I read this book and I just go, that's us, that's us. <laughs> That's us. You know, like, you know, stupid nicknames, and I suppose it's just the the, the hospitality crack. environment and the crack yeah, yeah. that comes with it. But like, uh, and Bourdain's no nonsense attitude as well, and it's um, and the like, and business wise as well. Another one is like sort of for online and social media is um, Dark Arts Coffee. Have you ever heard of them? No. So they're they're sort of based in London, and. Um, Whenever we first started in our social media, it was all very like regimented, you know, oh, here's our family meal, dude. Yeah. here's our meal for two. Like, uh, um, but Dark Heart just go, fuck it. Like, they don't care. Go on, like, like it's, it's unbelievable the way they, they don't care, right? And I thought, well, sometimes I post stuff and I go, well, why not be a wee bit more Dark Arts? You know, just do, just do it a wee bit different. A wee bit more out there. Um, especially, I think, with, with the online stuff, you do need to have a bit of this. Another one, um, same as... Uh, like, like, I think it's a great, is, do you know Mike's Fancy Cheese? Yeah. So his, his Instagram account's amazing because it's, it, he doesn't take himself too serious and it's his business account, but it also sort of merges into his personal yeah. life as well. So, you, so there'll be stuff like, you know, this is my new cheese today, this is my setup. Next supposed to be about his dog Ernie, sitting on the sofa. <laughs> you like to see that, but You like well. to see it, and that's, More. again, that's, I channel on to myself, I said, put a bit of personality, put a bit of yourself in it. Yeah. Do you know, so that's another inspiration. The, Inspirations do come from the strangest of sources, like at the same yeah, time, like 100%. like you know, like that's that's in my head when I'm posting. I, I, I think about dark arts coffee being a bit out there and, and not giving a shit, and I also think about Mike and putting himself into yeah. like it's all like it's. You need so. to put yourself out there as well, especially because a lot of people are too scared of putting themselves out there and maybe getting a bit of negative feedback or a bit of rejection. Yeah, but. Stop worrying about what can go wrong and just worry about yeah, what can go right. Well, it's the same as this podcast. I was, I was like. It's not app- apprehensive, yeah, kind of, because you are putting yourself up yeah. out there. But then, I'm, like as you say, think about what could go right about yeah. it. Like, like people could say, I'm you know. like, especially for people that mightn't have heard of Pizza Works, I mean, they'll be aware now of Pizza Works. And do you actually just want to tell them where Pizza Works is? Down the road there. Down the road, just down the road. <laughs> just down the road. So it's located in the Antrim Road. Yeah, 565 yeah. Antrim Road. One nice. over. Fort William Shops. Fort William Shops, yeah. So, um, yeah, so if you don't know, get to know. Yeah. Um, we'll move on to a few questions here just yeah. um, so your top three places in Belfast for pizza Flight Flight um, Pega at Common Market or sorry not Common Market um, Trade Market um, number three I don't know actually about number three is there any other in terms of say burgers or Chinese is anything they got there. Oh, um, in Belfast? Yeah. Uh, there's High Burger. High like, Burger. I love High oh, Burger, the boys yeah. High Burger. Like, we did a collaboration with them, and that was another one that was brilliant for us. Like, we, like these guys are very successful, very successful, especially online. And I've always been appreciative to them, because they, like, I asked them to do one of the collaboration, they were straight away yes, because they were customers of ours. Yeah. I, did, I didn't really realise at the time that they were customers of ours as well. But they came, and like, they just did it. Like didn't ask for anything in return, didn't, and it was called the high pie, and it was, like, it, it flew oh, out. Yeah. You ask anybody, people still try and order it, even though it was a special for one month, people still try and order it. Um, food in Belfast, it is quite good, restaurant-wise, you've got the likes of Vito or, or Hugo. Uh, one of my favourite places was the Bark and Dog, but unfortunately it's, it's closed, like, it was, one that, it was a great place, a good friend of mine. Um, what would you say for food? What, 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 what? Me, I'm. F- 
Oh, what kind of food do you like? I'm a, I'm a slag for pizza. I, I'm not joking. I am a slag for pizza. I love pizza. Have you been uh, to the flight? Nah, I've, like, Get I've over. heard of it. I've Get heard. over. Don't, don't worry about the queues. Get over. Um, it. I'd probably like, like I used to be a big, a big fan of Hudson's. Yeah. Me and Hudson's, they actually gave me fifty euro for going to Megaloof because mm -hmm. I done a big some person asked me what was Hudson's like and I, I put up a, like a big thing about what Hudson's were like and described the bakery as a chicken tikka bop was like eating a sandwich out of an angel's tits <laughs> and I put it up and I got loads of, like I got over like I think like 2,000 likes or something I got there and they kept me like free meal leagues and all and stuff well, like that there. guess what our pizza, me and Clara's pizza was before we had Pizza Works, what our favourite was? The Hudson Burner. Which was our spicy one? Yeah, oh, here. The Sicilian's <laughs> quite good as well. Like. Oh, well, everybody's like, uh, the Sicilian's a weird one in Belfast because everybody, people ask us for it. And yeah. it used to be on, on the old uh, menu, the old Fort William Pizzeria menu. But like, it's, so many people do the same. It's a weird one. Like, yeah. uh, it could be the pizza of Belfast. It's probably it's, yeah, it's popular. Uh, did you ever eat that their house is in? The Chinese down at Sedans? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like in there, like in there. What about nice. Chippies? Where's your? Chippies? See, I haven't really had a good chippy in a good way. Um, I'm trying to think. My dad lives over to Lisburn Road. There's a decent one out there. Do you ever go to Long's? Long's is... Nah, is that the one that gives you... You get a, a fish supper and they give you a round of bread. Uh, and a cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know because I've, like, I've heard of it. But I, like, I haven't been to Long's it myself. Of, like, that's like... I love... That's... Other than pizza sort of, is, is chippies. Like, I love chippies. Lethal. I don't mind bougie. But I think Boozham now, like you need a GCSE to go in the order. Mm. Like if you go in there blind and you've never been in before, yeah. it could be overwhelming. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like they're sitting basically shouting at you, like you're expected to know what you want, um, which I think is a bit mad. But this is a controversial question. Does pineapple belong on a pizza? Absolutely. <sighs> Absolutely. 100%. Uh, Everything belongs on... Like, do you think, think, sorry, th yes, th think of the origin of the pizza, right? Pizza was a peasant's food, right? They put a bit of bread, a bit of tomato, and whatever else they had, they put on it. Mm -hmm. So by that ethos, anything can go on pizza. Apart from Nutella, I'll never have Nutella on pizza. Never, ever, ever. They keep ah. torturing me to fucking put Nutella. You can't do me Nutella pizza. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. Not doing it. Do you um, look back and like, I know, like, I don't know if there is a history of pizza, but have you ever looked back at the history of pizza? And in Belfast? No, just in general. In general? Yeah. I mean, I've done, like, there's um there's a guy I follow and he does like he's, he's called Scott and he lives in New York and he does Scott's pizza tours and he tours all around he'll, he'll take you around New York and take you to all the old pizza places but he does like all this amazing stuff where he'll actually historically dig into these pizza places that put them for a hundred years and get the plans of whatever else has been yeah. you know what, what way to set up uh, but I think we inspiration kind of looked into what the first pizza place was in Belfast and someone the first and it was kind of like through old newspapers. And same when the first mentioned, but like, I think it was in the sixties or seventies. There was an Italian cafe in town. Was the first sort of pizza place in Belfast. But whenever I was going up, there was Dandrum now nice belonged to pizza places yeah. like like every other one's a pizza shop nearly now. But um, there was only one that was Pepino's, which is now it was Casabella, but it's closed now. But Pepino's back in the day, like was one of the was was, was, was was probably the only one you could get to yeah. be fair. Like, but it was. I don't like these ones that do kebab. Like I can't trust a shop that sells kebabs and pizza. Or burgers as well. Or bur I like see just one of them ones that's just a mixture of everything. It's, uh, it's hard to trust Just be good at one thing and, and just, just yeah. leave with that. Because sometimes we do get people phoning and they're like, uh, you do we gravy chip with that there? And we're like, I love, would love to, but you but know, no, gravy chip's not no. our thing, but I would love, I love gravy chip more than anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Try and justify yourself. Try and justify that. Maybe I could, Clara, can we put gravy chips in the mouth? No, we can <laughs> Um... Your death row, or, or death row meal. That's a bit chippy, yeah. or, uh, But I want your starter, your main dessert. First one. Oh, a drink as well. A drink, right. I want, I want a drink. Well, the drink's pint of Guinness. So if, it's, if I'm going out, I'm going to have a pint of Guinness. Uh, pasty main would be a pasty, pasty supper from Long's, I think, with a curry sauce on it. Is theirs pink or yeah, well, white? Uh, that's pink. We have a spice well, it as well. Used to be, remember down by Tesco was, what do you call the chippy there? It's brothers is, is is in there now. What did you call it? On the corner, just is that do you remember the garage is? Yeah. What do you call it? I used to work in Tesco when I was like seventeen, and there was a chippy there beside the garage. What did what did you call it? But I mean, they did these pink passes, and they were so heavy with pepper, and it was great. Used to cut the throat in, and it was brilliant. 
So pasty, pasty supper from Longs with, with curry. Um, as a starter, um, it would be back to the barking dog. They used to do like a tapas for their starters. You used to do like um, scampi and um, like beef short rib yeah. and stuff like that. So that would be the starter. Nice. Would, would be the three for whatever it was from the barking dog and a dessert. Uh, a nice chocolate tart. Chocolate nice tart. thicker chocolate. You know what makes you sick yeah. afterwards? You know, like uh, you feel it in your belly. Nice they came, <laughs> we're just going, ah, oh, fuck. I'm to get us out. Wings or goujons? The <sighs> age old question. Goujons, I think. Oh, I, love, I, I do that. love wings. Do you like wings? No, you don't. No, nah, goujons, I'm goujons. Uh, there's a few, I don't want to say too much, but there's a few, like, if you, if you dig deep enough on our online system, there's a few. Um, Different types of goujons, and I'll not say too much because it's, it's a wee bit secret. Uh, <laughs> but, Exclusive. Excuse me. But no, I do, I do like a, do like a chicken wing, like a high burger chicken wings, like are, are some of the best I've tasted. So I, there was a place in, in London called Randy's, and they they do bottomless wings, and I think I sucking myself on them. I just can't. It's uh, I've uh, still cheese. still to this day, like find it hard to do <laughs> wings. But we used to do. Um, I actually meant to do it today. I meant to bring up some hot sauce today. We we did like. Hot, just in, in the shop yeah. with ourselves. We used to make this really, really, really hot sauce. And it was to see how many we could eat. And the record sitting at 21 wings. Um, but even after that, like it's, it's, it's oh, hard aye. to even look at a chicken wing. That's, no, I'd it's, say so. Like, see, I just don't like having to eat round a bone from the food. I just like to just straight into it. Like, <laughs> there should be a fellow works for us, a nice slag. Because he, he's brilliant. I, I call him the wee chef. Because um, he... We, we had the, it's, it's a strange story, but anyway, but you know, I say my mom teaches people how to, how to sew and stuff. Yeah. So we, when, when it, in the summertime, it was really, really warm down there. So we um, got these, like, you know, the chef shirts and the jacket ones and got, yeah. and got them cut. Shorts. Got them cut in the shorts. So I sent, my mom takes a wee class in some old like boys just across the road. So I said, go over there and she'll cut them. And he walked in and uh, one of the women there went, where's the wee chef, Elizabeth? Come over for a shorts. <laughs> so I call him the wee chef and he's brilliant. I like, you know, chef and, and cooking and stuff. Except he doesn't like meat in the bone. And I slag him every time. I said, you're great. It's, Except you don't eat meat no. in the bone. <laughs> it's like ribs, I, ca I can't eat ribs. Oh, but ribs are like, you need to, it's hard to get a good ribs, I think, as well. Sometimes they're, they're tough boys. This is like, this question's not down here, but it's something which I kind of like live my life by. Is a pizza place is only as good as its garlic dip. Oh, I. Do you believe that though yes, as well? Yes, 100%. Right. There's a guy, we, so we've used the same, the same guy supplies our dips and, well, 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 what we use to make up our dips, and it's actually harks back to whenever Clara worked next warehouse. It was, he was a sauce guy in next warehouse. Yeah. Um. So we only use his garlic and his particular type of mayo, and we have our own mixture and we we'll mix them. But every every six months he goes on oh, the prices is going up. I can get you cheaper on England. Don't let him care. I don't care. I'll pay for that because yeah. that's, as you say, like it probably, you, you could be right, like it only is as good as your, your you garlic dip. for quality stuff. And the amount of garlic dips we go through, it's, it's insane. It's insane. It is insane. I'm jealous. You've got your own sauce guy. That's, that's something which I inspire to. Don, Don, he, <laughs> he's a legend of the, um, like the local sort of hospitality scene because sometimes you get these people coming and going, here, I can do your buckets of sauce, whatever else. And they go, I get them from Dalton. He goes, oh, Dalton, no problem. Just, just, just leave. Like, I think he's very well respected. Uh, yeah. But he's, he's knows the stuff. Knows the stuff, terrible the jokes. Um, but we wouldn't, wouldn't change on that, like it's, it's, it's definitely a unique taste. Like would you say, are you still getting your veg from the place? Yeah, green, the green, green, green grocers, yeah. Do you like to stay local? Yeah. Of things? Oh, yeah. I, I'd say, say like, we live in the, the shop's next door to the butcher shop. We get all our meat from there. We go to the veg shop. Our, our, Mike lives behind us, like, like, it, like the street behind the yeah. shop. Mike lives in there, Mike's fancy cheese. Try and keep it as local as possible. Um, like it's funny, like you'll see us, we will go down to the veg shop and just go and help ourselves and come around the counter and all, you know, rent the wee bacon all from. Like that's how so, sort of like friendly the and the relationship you've got. The the relationship. Like uh, you'll walk in, you go, if you any green pepper, she goes, I want in the bank, get them love. And you go down and get them and come back up again. Like it's just, it's, it's such a unique spot. Yeah. And like. It's the community. It is, it is yeah. the community. Yeah. And, and like, that's what I was, that's what I was saying. The, the man, you should get Stanley on. Stanley, with, you know, the butcher. He, yeah. he will, if you could get him on, I'll have him. He'll tell you some stories like, he'll be, say, he's uh, good. Uh, Butters usually do, and yeah, he knows he everybody, and he and he's seven, oh, seventy something, I'll, I'll say, but he's still a million miles an hour. Right, kid, here, what are you on? What are you on, kid? Right, right. and he's he's busting around Class. the shop, he's burning them, and he'd be out scrubbing. And uh, see, every Christmas, every Christmas, he uh, he parks the big massive 
Yeah, he does all the Christmas turkeys. He yeah. parks a big massive, like, like it's, like it's a huge big van outside the shops and blocks my shop and all, but whatever, it's Christmas. <laughs> but every year, as, as I'm not doing this anymore, Christmas, and he's uh, up and down the ladders and in and checking the temperatures. But there was one year I came out and, because uh, it's all like, you know, all the, sort of the controls and the dials. I always say this is the year I see it's Christmas. I came out and uh, we kids must have hit it and knocked it off and it, was, it just said defrost. And I was like, oh, oh fuck, there, there's North Belfast turkeys. <laughs> So I get on the phone, I get on the phone to, to one of Stanley's sons, I says, here, this, this is SD Frost. He's like, oh, Jesus. So he talked me through how to program it back in again, turn it back on. So obviously your ICF Christmas you for North Belfast. <laughs> Imagine everybody coming and getting their... No turkeys. No, no turkeys, they're all, they're all, they're all half cooked there and that's fun. So last question here is just basically, what's next for Pizza Works? I don't know. Oh, is there anything in the line? Just go with it? Just go with it, yeah. Just go continue week on week. Just, just still to be here in a couple of years' time. Like it's, Love it. It's, like it's Especially with your, like your marketing and stuff like that there as well. Like it is, like it does make you stand out as well. Yeah. Um, so but Something uh, I find very hard is, is the, the online stuff. You know, just try, it's, like sometimes it's, you don't have to root for it. It's a game as well. It is ruthless. Because you can get just a lot of saving. Because like, I've kind of seen it, like ourselves, we have only about three episodes in now, and you kind of get those people, the bots, or people that comment under every single video, yeah. just the same thing. Um, I'd say, like, have you ever experienced that there? Like, like you just getting that Yeah, well, that's constant. We, we were always loved running competitions and stuff. You know, comment, tag your mate in, yeah. get a pizza. But see now, as soon as you do it on Facebook, Somebody sets up a fake account with your with your logo, uh -huh. your name, and then they start contacting people. You've won the prize. Put you, and we've had people like there was a guy, one of my delivery drivers, went here. I won that competition. I went, oh. he goes, I, I had to put my car details and all in it. Oh, oh fuck, you didn't no actually, did you? Way. And he did. He put his car details in to the to the fake site, and, and did he get fleeced? Uh, a couple of quid, I. Oh, was. But like that's but now that's like now we can't really run competitions yeah. on, on, on Facebook and particular as much, but. Oh well, we do try, I know. That's mad. Yeah. There's hustlers out there, I guess. There, there is, oh, aye. There Definitely. Is. Definitely. But, um, Owen, I'd just like to thank you very much for no coming problem. on. Um, I've really enjoyed this here. Like, it's, it's been like, different for me as well. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate you coming on. No worries. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. All right. Cheers. Thank bud. you.